You are performing this repair at your own risk. We cannot be held responsible for any injuries or damages done to your device while attempting a repair. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. In this video, we'll be demonstrating how to replace a cracked front glass and digitizer on an iPhone 3GS. The process is identical for the iPhone 3G, however the parts are different, so be sure to purchase the correct part. For this repair, you want to be sure to purchase the part that's going to make this repair the easiest. Now in our case, this is all we sell at GadgetMenus.com, is the entire front assembly. It's a bit more expensive than just the front glass and digitizer itself. However, you're much more likely to complete the repair successfully as a do-it-yourselfer. It's going to be a cleaner repair, and it's also going to take you 10 minutes as opposed to an hour. If you were to just have the front glass and digitizer, you have to heat it up around the edges, remove the old glass, and when it's broken, it's difficult. Apply a new adhesive after removing the old one, and then attach your new front glass and digitizer. And there's a rubber seal around the edge, which is definitely going to get damaged while you're removing the old glass. So spend a little extra to purchase the full front assembly and do this repair right. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get started. Set everything aside, except for your small Phillips screwdriver. So we're going to remove two small Phillips screws near the bottom of the iPhone on opposite sides of the sink port. And you want to keep these in a safe place because those are essentially the only thing holding the front assembly in place. So you don't want to lose those. Now that those two screws are removed, we can go ahead and take our suction cup and we're going to want to put it near the bottom by the home button in a place where there are no cracks. Now depending on where the cracks are located and how badly cracked your screen is, this could be difficult. But you want to open it up on an angle as shown here because there's still three, three cables attached near the top. I'll give you a close up on those and how to remove those. You open it up on an angle, and then these cables are actually numbered. You see one, two, and then underneath of cable one, there's a cable three, which you will see in a second. So we'll remove these in order one, two, and then three. So we'll use a case opener tool to unplug it from the logic board. Cables 1 and 2 just unplug, and then cable 3 is actually latched in place. So the br black plastic clip needs to be lifted in the upward direction. And I'll show you just how that's done. I'll take your case opener tool, and you'll wedge it just underneath, and lift it so that it sits in the vertical direction. And then I'll release the tension between the port and the cable, and it'll just slip out. Now we can set that entire uh, assembly aside and we're only going to want to worry about the front glass and digitizer and LCD mid-frame assembly. Now we're going to be removing a total of six Phillips screws along the sides of the mid-frame as well as one on the underside. Now these screws may be covered by tape on your device and you can just remove that tape, it's not necessary to reapply it. Now for this next step, you're going to want to be really careful so that you don't end up cracking the LCD screen. You're going to want to wedge your flathead screwdriver in between the front glass and digitizer assembly and the LCD frame assembly. And this will allow you to remove the old LCD screen so that you can put that in your new front assembly. Once we've freed that, we're going to want to pull the LCD screen away as shown.
Now you do want to be pretty careful not to get fingerprints or dust on the inside of the glass or the LCD screen so that the job looks professional. What we're going to need to do is peel off a plastic piece on the inside of the front glass and digitizer. And this is just here to protect it from uh, dust and fingerprints while it's in storage and during installation. So go ahead and remove that. Bend this metal piece up just a bit. And this Phillips screw is just an extra. Uh, you actually don't need it because you already have the old ones. And we'll take our old LCD, slip it beneath the metal clip, and put it back in place on the new frame. And once that's done, we'll go ahead and reinsert the six Phillips screws. And now we're ready to put the front assembly back on. I'm going to put the cables on in reverse order this time. First three, then two, which goes to the front glass and digitizer, and finally the LCD screen cable. Now the first one's going to be the hardest, cable three. It's small, and you have to get it, uh, bend it at the right angle so that it'll slide in easy. So once you have it in the port, Flip the black latch back down in place. And now we'll go ahead and press the front glass and digitizer cable back into its place. Now don't force it, uh, just get it in the right position and it should clip right back on. Now for the final one, we're going to have to set the phone down and bend it at a slight angle in order to get that cable on there, so otherwise it'll come off. Once we have all three in place, you can close the front uh, assembly, make sure it's flush with the rest of the phone, and then we'll reinsert the two screws near the bottom, and that's a complete repair. And now we'll go ahead and turn the phone on, just to confirm that everything's working properly. And our phone is booted successfully. And for the touch, seems to be working. Tested in different positions. And we've got a successful repair. It's extremely important that you get the right part for this repair. You want the entire front glass and digitizer along with the midframe assembly. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or contact us through our website, gadgetmenders.com, where you'll also find a full line of parts and toolkits for the iPod, iPhone, iPad, and Zune. Thanks for watching.